Rain, rain, go away. Come back. Well, it seems like every five minutes, but maybe another day. Thanks for joining us on this dreary Tuesday, everyone. I'm Chris Pisano. And I'm Jordan Jagalinzer. Yeah, I don't mind a good rainy day every now and again. Every now and again. It's getting a bit redundant. Yeah. I could use some sunshine. And we do have the chance to see the sun again this week, maybe after a few more storms. For the very latest, let's check in with first warning meteorologist Jana Brown. Hey, Jana. Hey, guys. Yeah, it is cloudy again out there today, and that's kept temperatures well below normal. We only had a high of about 70 today in the lower valley, which is about 13 degrees where we should be this time of year. A lot of that due to that easterly breeze too. That uh, middle and upper level wind flow is coming in straight off the ocean and that's keeping those clouds firmly in place. Right now we're at 68 degrees. We do have some reports that there is some patchy drizzle around uh, the West Springfield area this evening. So that is the potential that you may get a little damp if you are outside. Other than that, it's cloudy and it's mild with temperatures in the 60s for most. Dew points are also in the 60s. We are going to start to feel those climb as a warm front approaches overnight into tomorrow morning. Now we do have cloudy skies. We're not seeing anything on the radar, but drizzle usually doesn't show up anyway. So some patchy drizzle, a little bit of mist and fog possible throughout the night. If you're planning on taking your pup out for a walk, we have Charlie for you today for your dog walking forecast. Just make sure that you maybe grab a, a jacket. You might need it anyway because it is on the cooler side. Muggy with the chance for a few sprinkles here and there, and then a couple of showers are possible overnight into tomorrow morning. That will be followed by some partial clearing early tomorrow afternoon. But then from the mid to late part of the afternoon, we'll start to see some thunderstorms flare up and there is the threat for some strong to severe storms Wednesday afternoon and evening that could bring torrential rain and also some strong to even damaging wind gusts. The main time frame for that for the most part looks to be starting at around 4 p.m., but it may go all the way out until midnight. It's looking like isolated to scattered wet weather. Uh, and then the rest of the week is actually looking brighter and warmer. I'll have more on that in just a few minutes. Back to you guys. Jenna, thanks. We're following breaking news that's been developing all day out of Springfield. The death of a woman hit by an SUV while walking in a crosswalk near American International College this morning. The victim has now been identified as 65-year-old Margaret Lanny Kretschmar of Agawam. Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis joins us live from the scene where it all happened with the very latest and what people in the community are now saying. Leon? Jordan, Chris, the victim was hit by the SUV and this crosswalk right here on Wilbraham Road just before 9 this morning. Now, police are still investigating the circumstances, but Springfield City Councilor Marla Brown tells me there have been long-standing concerns about speeding in this area. It was a scary sight. It was a very scary and gruesome sight. Springfield City Councilor Milo Brown out jogging Tuesday morning witnessed the scene on Wilbraham Road where police say a woman was hit by a vehicle while walking through a crosswalk near American International College. The car struck her. Uh, the car stopped immediately um, and got out. The driver of that car remained on scene before going to the hospital on their own. Tragically, the adult woman who was in the crosswalk was struck and later died at the hospital. Springfield Police Department spokesman Ryan Walsh says the circumstances of the crowd under investigation. But Brown tells Washington Mass News there have been past issues with speeding and crashes in this area. When I come out, I live only two streets down. So this is something that I see all the time right from my where I live at. But Brown says something needs to change. A lot of people say to raise crosswalks might deter some of that speeding because you're not going to keep going 45, 50 miles down the road. You have to now slow down. But he tells us he's received pushback on this idea. Certain people in the city, they're saying as far as the design, it might be a little difficult to do it. I've had residents and myself look into other areas where they have them. Again, the victim was identified late this afternoon by the Hampton District Attorney's Office as 65-year-old Margaret Lonnie Kretschmar of Agawam. We'll continue to follow developments and bring you the latest both on air and online as we get it. For now, live in Springfield, Leon Purvis, Western Mass News. Leon, thanks for that live report. Now to new developments out of Chicopee, where police tell Western Mass News they're investigating multiple people in connection to a catalytic converter theft this morning. The victim of Tuesday's theft reaching out to Western Mass News, sharing this photo of their van after their converter was cut out. They do wish to remain anonymous and tell us it all happened within just a matter of minutes. It's not the first theft across our area of this type or in this resident's neighborhood. Close neighbor of mine, um, his van, um, it's like the same model, um, roughly the same year. 
and his was cut out the night before. With work bands in particular, just kind of just be careful. Um, even my mechanic that I called uh, mentioned that a couple of his clients had theirs cut out as well. Police say they have suspects in this case, but haven't yet released any more information. They tell us the investigation is still ongoing. The Department of Public Health releasing today's COVID-19 data. They say the state's positivity rate over the past week sits at 0.62%. They say there were no new deaths due to the coronavirus, and so far nearly 61% of Massachusetts residents have been fully vaccinated. For a full look at those numbers, you can check out our free Western Mass News streaming app. And new this evening out of Agawam, the city council expressing concerns about the proposed car storage facility in Southwick. In a resolution passed Monday night, councilors cited potential traffic impacts from the Carvana project on Route 57 and the Feeding Hills intersection, fearing the facility will damage the peace and tranquility of the area, especially during the early morning and late evening hours. The council plans to share their concerns with Southwick's planning board next Tuesday, July 20th, during the project's next public hearing. A new at 6 of March is underway in Springfield to call attention to home care and child care workers in the city. This group is fighting for union pay and federal recovery funds from the pandemic. Western Mass News reporter Lindsay Kane live for us tonight in Springfield with the details. Lindsay. Chris and Jordan, workers marched from here on John Street to the overpass on Route 20 with signs that read, Home Care is Essential. Now, this march is part of a nationwide push to prioritize black and Latino care workers, calling on Congress to give them a share of federal pandemic recovery funds. The vice president of the SIEU union tells Western Mass News there's around 8,000 home care employees in the city of Springfield, making them a backbone of the economy. We want to make sure that everyone has access to good quality child care and home care services and that the workers get paid a good wage, a decent union job wage for the care that they deliver. And so we need to make investments to make sure people have access to these services. He says these workers were on the front lines during the pandemic in people's homes, in nursing homes and child care centers. And he wants to see Congress invest in these employees so they can get premium pay for their work during COVID-19 and also receive fair union pay moving forward. There's still a good group of people here behind me rallying, and there's also a mobile vaccination site on scene for those who want to get vaccinated. Live in Springfield, Lindsay Kane, Western Mass News. Lindsay, thanks for that live report. Governor Charlie Baker focusing on the state's more than $5 billion in federal pandemic relief funding today, calling for a portion of it to go towards home ownership programs. With decisions now up to the state legislature, Western Mass News reporter Matt Satilli joins us live in studio after speaking with a local lawmaker about what he sees as priorities for the money. Matt? Well, Jordan and Chris, after speaking with State Senator Eric Lesser, he tells me this federal funding is a one-time payment, and he wants to see it used as a mechanism to make Springfield what he calls the crossroads for Western New England. I worry a lot that we are going to push people who are renting today who might have the ability to buy with down payment assistance out of the communities that they're in because they don't own. Governor Charlie Baker points to a new state-issued report on Tuesday identifying the high cost of housing in the Bay State as a significant challenge to the state's economy. He's calling on the state legislature to approve $1 billion out of the state's $5 billion in federal pandemic relief aid for housing initiatives. Western Mass News spoke to State Senator Eric Lesser about the governor's proposal. People's mortgage payments, people's rent uh, is just unaffordable, and it's going to drive people away from our state and it's going to drive businesses away from our state because people just can't afford to live here. While Senator Lesser agrees housing prices in the Commonwealth are too high, he says using this funding for transportation could be a more effective long-term goal. I feel strongly that because it's one-time money and we get it once, it needs to be spent on one-time expenses that are going to unlock future growth and future opportunity for us. And he adds it may directly improve the housing situation, including down payment assistance and building units that Baker addressed. A very important reason why housing has become so expensive is because nobody can afford to get around. Uh, the traffic is terrible. Our trains don't come to Springfield, which means that people have to feel like they've got to live close to work, which drives the price of homes up. Western Mass News asked, what about the rural communities in Franklin and Hampshire counties? 
Lesser points to existing north-south rail routes between Springfield, Holyoke, Northampton, and Greenfield. If we can then complete the east-west route, Springfield, Worcester, Framingham, Boston. Well, you're not only connecting Springfield and Boston, you're gonna be creating Springfield as the crossroads uh, of rail transit for the whole Western New England area. And while he says it wouldn't be cheap, he thinks this one-time funding serves as the perfect opportunity to set up economic success for years to come. What can we be spending one time, again, because we only get the money once, that's going to unlock opportunity, unlock growth for people in the months and years and decades to follow. Lester will be one of over 200 state legislators voting on how this money will be spent in Massachusetts. Reporting live in the studio, Matt Satilli, Western Mass News.